Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is well today. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope everyone stayed safe during this situation we're in. I am Paul Apollonia. I'm going to be showing you what I sold on eBay last week from April 27th, 2020 to May 3rd, 2020. Let me introduce myself. Again, I'm Paul Apollonia. I've been selling on eBay for what feels like forever since about 2006. Uh, got real serious around 2008. Uh, got into consignment, uh, got into training a couple of years later through eBay. eBay has since uh, ended their training, uh, their education specialist program, but I'm still training away, loving it. Actually, I'm offering a special. Please look below on the link when the video is over for a $1 training series. It's over two hours of video training on eBay. Um, it's not very, it, it's not super current, but the principles are good. They can still be used today. That's my goal with my training is I try and keep it pretty basic uh, stuff that can be used for several years on eBay. I know it changes a lot, but um, that's that. I also run a Raleigh eBay meetup group. We are doing Zoom meetings now. Hopefully, we'll get back to person-to-person -person meetings. I don't know when. And we're having a guest in uh, this week. That is a paid Zoom meeting, and it's, it's all information. It's in the meetup. It'll be, uh, I'll send emails out and everything. It's $5 and looking forward to that this week, uh, this uh, May 13th. It is, I'm sorry, it's 7 p.m. And it'll be a Zoom meeting. And it would normally be on May 14th. It's the second Thursday of the month. But the 14th is my birthday and I'm not doing it on the 14th. So we're doing it on the 13th. All right, let's uh, get this uh, show on the road. These are just a few things I sold this week. I got a lot of duplicate items. A lot of items you guys seen before over and over and over again. I'm trying to make these videos shorter. I know I keep on saying that, and they're not becoming shorter. <laughs> trying to give you guys a lot of tips and tricks here, too. Um, I also sold a few things on Facebook Marketplace, believe it or not, last week. I was blown away. I had stuff listed out there so long, I forgot I even had it out there. And, of course, you know, I listed something for 100 and, you know, I ended up selling it for 60 and whatever. It's gone. It was a big item. It's gone. I sold a few other things too on Facebook Marketplace. Did some training. So everything's good here. We're still making money. Wife is still working from home, doing very well. Kids are well too. All right, let's get this going here. Again, as you said, you're not going to duplicate items, but here is the DVDs again. I'm still selling these probably a couple a week, not making a ton of money. These are what I call loss leader sales. Uh, I personally believe you need to have some stuff in your store that's going to roll over quick and be a replenishable. And you make a couple bucks, maybe even you lose a little tiny bit of money every once in a while. A uh, very quick story again. we um, I, I got these DVDs a couple years ago through a consignment client. They moved. They said, don't worry about it. Just keep everything. I said, okay. Then I found more DVDs and somebody else's stuff that I had that they told me to keep. So I had this big box of DVDs. I went through them around Christmas, was going to uh, send them to uh, Declutter, which is a mobile app on your phone. They give you 20 cents a DVD. I thought, okay, well, that's pretty good. You know, I'm not doing nothing with these. Looked on eBay. Turns out Declutter is selling them on eBay, which is fine. Great business model. Obviously, they're a big enough, big enough company where they can sell many a day and do very well, making a low profit. Uh, on this one was $7.89. Um, actually that's, that's good money for what I made on this one. Usually I'm only making a buck or two. If that sometimes, I think I made about three bucks on this. This went out media mail since it is a DVD very quickly. How I do my listings. I keep my title brief to the point what people are searching for. I normally don't even use parentheses. I don't even know why those are in there. I obviously copied this, this listing from somebody else and forgot to take those out. Um, you will, I will tell you over and over again, special characters are no, no. And you will go on eBay and see people that sell thousands of items a day or a week that have special characters in their titles. So I don't do it because it's just not Google friendly. So I stay away from special characters. That's just me. Um, I did free shipping because that is what everybody else was doing. that was selling these and I priced it at a little bit less than everybody else was selling it. 
This is what they call a long tail sale. It sits in your store or in your eBay account for a long time. And this is somewhat a replenishable because I have multiple copies of this, but I only listed one because I found the other copies later on. You want to do this with replenishables. You want to do these low-end sales with replenishables. I know people to go to Lowe's and Home Depot, walk around, find something there that sells on eBay that they can get, and they know that that store will have it for a long, long time. It's not a closeout. Nail screws, whatever, hinges. Excuse me. They'll buy them. I say buy 10 of them, list them, quantity of 10. When you get down to a five, run out and get more. Have a par level where there'd be five or three or whatever. All those stores are very close to me, so it's no big deal for me to do that. Um, where else? Oh, item specifics. Make sure you use these. These are very important in both eBay and Google. When you're using these, you'll see pull-down menus. Please try and use one of the pull-down options in the menu. One of the options in the pull-down menu. Um, it will help you out. Let me turn my phone to vibrate. I thought I had it on vibrate. It will help you out in eBay searches <coughs> and um, <coughs> and Google searches. Uh, talk about shipping. All this is what they call, let me close this. You don't need to see my ugly mug that bad. All this is what they call global shipping. It's a program with eBay where all I have to do if I ship it overseas, internationally, whatever, to another country, I just got to ship it to eBay's location in Kentucky. They have a site there that takes it from there. So as long as I ship it properly, pack it properly, ship it correctly, it gets down there, I'm out of the picture. Once I get the message that they got it, I'm out of the picture. You can get lost, stolen, broken, eBay picks up the tab. I've never had a problem with global shipping. Not once. I've been using it since it came out for years. I know a lot of people don't like it. They believe the buyers charge more taxes or they were screwed once with global shipping. It works for me. It's fine. Um, I This is media mail, but I normally pick, I obviously pick media mail because it's going to go media mail. Nothing else is the cheapest for this. When I'm shipping stuff, I normally pick economy shipping. Um, you will see when you pick economy shipping, you'll see a big span of days. Like, I think it starts at 5 to 10 or something. That may scare away some buyers, but I ship out my stuff 95% of the time. goes out U.S. Post Office Priority Mail or FedEx Ground. Um, rarely do I pick any other option than that. I pick the economy shipping because I, then I can choose. I'm not doing the media mail on all my items, just the economy shipping option. Then I can choose any shipping option that eBay offers that way. If I were to pick Priority Post Office, I could not ship it. Well, you could, but you might not get protection with eBay if there's something goes wrong with the shipping is what the issue is there. So that gives me all the options. And I think that's it. My return policy is 30 days. That was a big pill to swallow when it first came out, but I really don't get many returns, thankfully. Let's go to the next item. We only have a handful of items this, this week. Uh, this is another uh, low-cost item. Boy, these things, you know, they were selling – really well last year and actually the year before this listing has been out there a year and a half uh these are believe it or not dollar tree items lots of people do very very well on ebay selling dollar store items let me explain the total cost was uh three dollars a dollar piece one two three Plus tax, so it's like three twenty-one for all of it. I was at Dollar Tree anyway to make a special trip to get these. Um, shipping went out first class. It was way under a pound. It was like eight ounces, I think. Uh, free shipping. So uh, I made total. I made about three dollars and eighty-five cents after um, after expenses and shipping and fees. Now, I was at Dollar Tree anyway, and I make a special trip, although I do make a special trip sometimes to replenish these things. I also know people that live very close to Dollar Trees that don't even have the inventory. They just, when they sell it, they know exactly what it weighs. They print a label at home. They put it on an envelope, on a poly envelope, whatever they're using, and they go to Dollar Tree and buy it and ship it out that way. That's up to you. There's all different ways you can run your business. But there is money in dollar store items, not a whole lot of money. It's all a volume-based thing. I know people that do very, very well selling uh, dollar store items on Amazon. I did very well two years ago selling dollar store calendars on Amazon. Insanely well for about two months. I do sell on Amazon. I, I'm just right now, I'm just doing books right now. I've got a lot of books under consignment from 
two people. So I'm focusing on uh, getting books up there and also on eBay. These, I didn't even do any kind of special packing. I just put them in a poly envelope. I just put them in one of these. Nothing's fancy and folded it over and it went out. All right, let me tell you about this item. This is the second time I sold this item. Got returned once because the first time I did not have no cables in the listing. So I redid the listing. Guy returned it. Paid for shipping. I figured I'd resell it. And this is a consignment item. That was sort of consignment item, but eh, you can have it. Don't worry about it. Item, I get a lot of people like that. They'll give me a lot of items and I'll go, well, just keep this item. Do what you want with it. Or, you know, give me a percentage of that one. Don't do, you know, whatever. Um, so I sold it once, got returned because it had no cables. Like the listing was just like this. It had this, but without no cables on it. But the first line is no cables. What you see is what you get. And that's what I would think that's what you would do, right? You get what you see. <laughs> Pretty simple. Nowhere do I have in here includes cables. I have made a special thing in the... In the um, in a specifics item notes, what you see is what you get. Bundle description, line X5 tracker, and pouch. Nothing else, no cables. Guy gets it. Where's the cable? I don't have the cable. You need to you need to accept this return. I don't have the cable. You should have said I had a cable. Blah, 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 blah. I get it back. I relist it. Sell it about, oh, I sold it last week. Get a message from another guy that bought it. Big, long, threatening message. Like eBay extortion type message. You should have told me. I've had problems with these line with these line six things ever since they were made. Or something about to shock them or something. Or something about his finger. I don't know what it was. But um, he really came at me hard, to be honest with you. And I was pretty upset i'm 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 pretty okay with returns anymore i don't really care i'll just i, I just re refund or get it back and then refund anyway i don't even worry about it but this really upset me i told him i'm not happy with with the way he messaged me and i said the same thing the listing says what the listing says is what you get see is what you get the pouch and and the thing and I told him, I, I copy and pasted the rules on eBay feedback extortion. And he came back at me again. Well, I call eBay, they'll side with me because it doesn't, you should listen, this part's not working because it doesn't, it needs the software to work. And blah, blah, blah. well, other people are selling this thing just like this on eBay with no cables and they're selling them. I told him that he came back again with me that he's going to call eBay and this and that and the other thing. And, you know, and you know what I did? I just refunded them. I lost $28. I just refunded them. It wasn't worth it. I, I didn't feel like dealing with calling eBay and dealing with this. I, I just refunded them. I, I didn't want to, but it's just, is not worth my time. Not at all. And I blocked him. The minute I refunded him, I blocked him. There's a block list. Just Google uh, eBay block list and you can block buyers. I only block buyers <clears throat> they give me a problem. I don't block zero feedback people. Some people get crazy with this stuff. Only sub, well, we all started out with zero feedbacks. But I only block people that really, really went out of their way to give me a problem. Now, you can block somebody and they can still buy from you by signing on as a guest. Just remember that. Uh, another item I had, uh, somebody gave me a long, long time ago that I forgot I had. I was cleaning up my inventory a couple weeks ago. I uh, didn't make a lot of money on this. Probably made about seven fifty, but it was sitting around. Took five, maybe a minute to list. Another minute to take pictures. Try and take all the pictures. It is a Cirrus, uh, whatever antenna for a satellite radio for your house. Um, I have done very well with this Weber grill. Up the uh, long story, you may have heard it before if you listen to the other videos I did. Um, neighbor was throwing away a Weber grill and a weed whacker. They called me, said, do you want these? I went, yep. As I was going up, as I was loading it in my van, she pulls in. She goes, the thrift stores are closed because of this virus. And I have these two document scanners. Do you want them? I'm going, ugh, document scanners. God, they don't go for nothing. Well, one went for, I made $316 profit on it. It was some kind of fancy Fuji 
scanner I had no idea and another one I made uh, $35 on and the grill I didn't make much money on this I probably made about $11 and I just sold the lid on the Weber grill for uh, I made $62 on that went to somebody up in New Jersey that's profit in my pocket so I'm happy with that and I Frankenstein a box for that I mean I don't think I have a picture of that I can maybe try and show it to you on my phone hang on a second Oh no. No, you're not going to be able to see that. And I don't think it's on the computer uploaded to Google yet. So that was it. Uh, I was uh, surprised that this sold so quickly. Um, I had a heck of a time finding parts on uh, for, for these, the part numbers and everything. Not too many of them on eBay, believe it or not. There's some, but not a whole lot listed. I actually had to go out to the web and, and, and I had to... I literally search on Weber grill because it has a side gas uh, thing, which I got to sell still. Um, you know, Weber grill with side gas and scroll through all the pictures and find one that looks like the one I had. And then I finally found a parts list because I didn't know the serial number or the model number or anything on it because it was all worn off. Part of the reselling. Okay, it's a pretty cool sale. Uh, again, most of my sales are, I forgot to mention this, between like, like you saw with the DVD, almost nothing to some people, up to about 20, 30, 40 bucks. I do get the gems, 100 bucks, 2,000, whatever. Those are far and few between, <clears throat> but most of my other low end sales, I'm totally fine with that. I know a lot of people that don't sell things less than $20. Profit, that's fine, whatever, whatever works for them. You can run this business any way you want. I am totally happy with selling this item. And I don't have the boxes here in front of me. And putting it into a little tiny box I got for nothing, wrapping some plastic around it, and it goes out first class. And I can make an easy $10 to $12, $15 on this item. Two minutes of listing, a minute to pack and ship. I'm happy with that. I know many aren't. Excuse me. But before I sold all three controllers to this, there were, I don't know what these things were. They were Sony PS3 controllers with a big white ball, two of them, and some kind of other controller. I don't know. I don't play games. But um, so I sold those. I made probably about $12 on each of those. So that's 12 times three plus this. And this was an item I found in my dining room. Um, I don't even know where I got it from, to be honest with you. I know it wasn't a consignment item because I keep those all organized and in boxes with names on them. Somebody probably just gave this to me or maybe I even bought it at a garage sale. I do not do too much garage selling or thrifting because I do a lot of consignment and people give me most of this stuff. Most of the stuff you're seeing here was given to me or I bought very, very cheaply. These gas tanks, another great story. I listed these gas tanks about two years ago. Couldn't sell any of them. These are to an old, old, old string trimmer. Old Troy built gas tanks in the back, right on top. Carburetors underneath there. Pull cords right on the top. Um, they're red. Um, you've seen them before, and they last forever. Um, couldn't sell them at all. This was my last one. I sold seven of them. Each one I make between nine and uh, 10 50 all depends where it's being shipped. It goes up first class. I wrap it in bubble wrap and I put it in a small poly envelope. So that is, uh, I get a lot of stuff like this. These are parts actually for the first time in my parting out of small engine stuff. I'm out of gas tanks of all kinds. No more gas tanks. I got to go find more gas tanks. I just cleared out my backyard a couple of months ago, gave most of the stuff to a scrap guy. In reality, I probably should just kept a little bit longer and went through it because now I need more parts. But that's okay. We will figure it out. Okay, my friends, believe it or not, that is it. It's my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it if you want to see more videos like this. I also have a lot of being frugal videos. I'm also going to be doing a series of videos coming up on Chromebooks. I just bought a brand new spanking Chromebook, an HP X360. It was not the cheapest Chromebook. It was pretty darn expensive, but my birthday is coming up and I wanted to get it. So I worked out a deal with the family <laughs> and I got it. And it is awesome. I'm loving it. It's a 14 inch monitor. I went to a smaller Chromebook before, an R11. Love that, but I'm really loving the bigger monitor now. Don't know why I love the smaller monitor, but I love this. It's very powerful. Eight gigs of internal RAM. 
and 32 gig drive and stuff. Chromebooks are pretty cool. They're not for everybody. I'm going to do some videos on that. Uh, backlit keyboard. It's pretty, pretty cool. I'm loving it. Can run Linux applications. I'm going on and on. Sorry. So it's almost a Windows machine now, Chromebook. It's not so distant with the Linux applications. Um, th there's a lot of Windows-based uh, applications you can run on um, on a Chromebook now. Uh, LibreOffice and stuff like that. Okay, don't forget, like the channel or uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you thought it was helpful. I'll have that link down there for the eBay training. Um, and don't forget the uh, Raleigh eBay meetup group. It'll be a Zoom meeting, so you can be in your PJs or whatever and attend that. Actually, I'm starting to like Zoom more and more. I went in kicking and screaming, but I'm kind of liking it. It makes it a lot easier to invite guests in from eBay and stuff because I don't have to set up something at Panera. Um, and check out my trainings are all below. The special deal on the training, $1. You can't go wrong with that. All right, my friends, thank you so much. Please be safe and have a wonderful day. Thank you.